Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In this tutorial we are going to be exploring how to apply custom transformation to WASP parts. What does that mean and what does this allow us to do is that we can take a part and position it in a specific location in space and also assign to it a specific orientation. This is very useful to, for example, set the starting point of your aggregation or also to reposition your aggregation once you uh, generated it in order to place it in a specific location in a 3D model. Uh, if you go on and download the uh, Grasshopper file you find uh, in the description box, uh, you find uh, two parts which are already predefined for you, uh, uh, octahedron and uh, tetrahedron. Uh, what those two parts uh, allow to do put together is they allow to create a space filling polyhedral pattern that fills space without any gap. Uh, we're gonna then go on and build an aggregation uh, out of these parts and then we're just gonna explore how we can use the WASP transformation component that you can find under parts to uh, position a part in a specific location and with a specific orientation to define the starting point of our aggregation. I'm gonna go a little bit quickly into this uh, part as you've already seen it in these tutorials. If it's not clear how to generate an aggregation, you can go back and watch tutorial one and two. Let's get started. We're gonna start by creating a geometry component and we're gonna right click set one geometry and select our octahedron. I'm then gonna go on and select the octahedron in Rhino and hide it. And then we're gonna import our uh, points. Let's bring a point component, right click, set multiple points, and now we have to select all the eight points together. Let's gonna start from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and right click to accept. I'm gonna then create a point list component to store to visualize the numbering and the order in which I selected them and I'm gonna add a slider to make the numbering a bit wider. And now that I can see the order in which these have been selected, I can create a curve component and import the curves. I right click, set multiple curves and I follow the numbering. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and I accept. We are gonna then go under parts, get the basic part this is our octahedron, so we're gonna name this, we're gonna create a panel and name this octa. We're gonna connect our geometry. And then in order to generate our connections, we're gonna go under elements, connection from direction, connect our geometry, our centers, and our up direction, and connect this to connection. And here we go, we have generated our part. I'm just gonna then copy, pa copy paste this whole block move it a bit lower and edit the information for the tetrahedron. The first thing is changing the name, so we're gonna call this tetra and hit OK. I'm gonna right click, set one geometry, select the tetrahedron. I'm gonna then get the tetrahedron and hide it. I'm gonna right click on the points, set multiple points and pick the points in order, one, two, three and four. And then following the numbering, I'm gonna select the curves. One, two, three, and four. And here we go. We now have our parts. We are gonna merge them together. You can zoom in and delete the D3. And then once again, we are gonna create a stochastic aggregation to test what this part gives us. We're gonna bring the aggregation, stochastic aggregation. We're gonna assign our parts to part. And then we're gonna specify the number of parts we're gonna have, let's say 120 as a starting point. And for the rules, we're gonna simply place a rule generator. So we're gonna go under rules, rule generator, if you want to know more about how the rule generator works, you can go back to tutorial number three. We're going to connect this and connect it to rules. And lastly, we're going to create a button to reset, which we're going to connect to our reset component. 
Great, we have our output and now all we need to do is we need to separate our two parts into um, the octahedron and tetrahedron and then visualize them. As we saw in uh, tutorial number two, we can do that by going to parts, filter parts by name, we plug our parts and then in name we just add a panel saying octa, in this case for the octa. And then we're going to place a wasp get part geometry component to extract the geometry. And here we see our octahedron. And lastly, we are going to create a custom preview component to which we are going to attach a swatch. And we're going to choose a color. I'm just going to copy paste all this block and change the panel from octa to tetra to select the tetrahedrons and assign them a separate color. Great. What you can see here is that the result that we get is definitely not a space filling pattern. And the reason for that is that to achieve a space filling pattern, we have to make sure that uh, tetrahedron connect only to octahedron and octahedron only to tetrahedron and they never allowed to connect to each other, to, to themselves, sorry. To do that, we saw it in the, pre in the last tutorial, we can just set the self P in the rule generator to false. So we're gonna create a toggle, place it on false and those will force the rules to be calculated just between parts which are of different type and not with the same type. If we now reset, you see that we are actually able to create this space filling aggregation and reset and have different results. And so this is very quickly what how we create an aggregation in WASP. But uh, a question that I got quite often is that uh, many times you might want to do two things. The first thing is you want to be able to set which part to start from because by default WASP, as you can see, starts randomly either from an octahedron or from a tetrahedron. It just uses it randomly. And the second thing that you might want to do is you might want to set exactly where the starting point of the aggregation is and you might not want to start from the location where your parts are. Uh, in order to do that, uh, I provide, was provides a very handy component that is called the transform part component. So what this transform part component allows you to do it is allows you to transform a geometric, to, to apply a geometric transformation to a chosen part and then position this part in a specific location in space. What we can then do is we can use the prep input of the uh, aggregation component, which allows you to set parts in the to add parts in the aggregation, which will be added before starting the aggregation itself, and in this way decide where is the starting point of our aggregation. How do we do that? Let's start by going back and hiding for a second our whole aggregation, and then we come back and we want to decide which part we want to start with. Let's say, for example, that I want to start with uh, an octahedron. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create, go to under parts and create a transform part component. And I'm going to connect my octahedron to it. And then once that's done, we have to assign a transformation to this. How do we assign a transformation? It's quite simple. If we go under the transform tab of Rhino, all the transformation components of Rhino, let's for example bring in a move component, they all have two outputs. They have one which is the transform geometry and then they have the X output that is the actual transformation that has been applied to the object to transform it in the position we want. So for example, what we can very simply do is, let's move it a bit lower, is I can apply a shift on the x-axis, so I create a x-axis, to my part. Let's suppose that I want to move it off 50 units. And now I don't have to connect anything to the geometry tab, but you see, and, see, and so I've got anything in the geometry because nothing has been transformed, but you see that I actually get an output in x and I get the transformation object. 
If I apply the transformation object to our part, our part gets transformed. Of course, you cannot see that because we are not seeing the part geometry. But if we go back to the WASP tab and we go to part, get part geometry, and we connect this to part, we see that we created a part that has been shifted in space of 50 units. I could shift it a bit more. But then if I will connect this part to the previous input and reset, if I visualize the final output, you see that our aggregation has actually started from that part. I can reset as many times as I want, and this, the aggregation will always start from an octahedron and will always start from that octahedron. Now, what if you don't want to just move this octahedron, but you also want to change its orientation. Let's hide our aggregation once again. And so if we want to rotate this octahedron, we can go again in the transform tab. And under Euclidean, I'm going to get a rotate 3D, for example. And so I'm going to specify two inputs. So What's the angle at which I'm going to rotate? So I'm going to right click, set it to degrees, and then I'm going to say, for example, that I want to move of 45 degrees. And then I'm going to say that I want to rotate around the Y axis. So I want this octahedron to twist around it. So we're going to create a Y component, connect it. And now this gives us a Y component. And if you see what happens if I apply that, I actually see my component rotating around the y-axis. Now, what if I want to apply both of them? Well, in the transform tab, always under the utilities, you have a component that is called compound. And what compound allows you to do is to compound multiple transformations together to create a composite transformation. Be careful. Compound transformations are uh, not commutative, so the order in which you apply the transformations is important. We are going to see that in a moment. Let's create a merge component in order to keep things, to keep track of the order. And I'm going to connect my rotation first and my orientation second. And then I connect this to compound. And if I'm going to connect this to that, you see that now I have my component that I can move along the axis and I can also orient in space. Just for you to see, if I would connect them the other way around, the result will be different because the component first gets shifted and then it gets rotated around the y-axis. So very important to always keep track of which order your transformations are applied. If now I go on and turn this on again and I reset, you see that now my whole orientation is twisted of the degrees I twisted the first part. Since twisting the first part uh, defines the orientation of how the aggregation starts, it's in, then it's natural that the whole aggregation gets twisted by simply twisting the starting part. Another thing that can be done, which is quite handy to do with this component, is that we can also create multiple starting points for an aggregation. To do that, it's relatively simple. So if, for example, I would just copy paste this whole block of transformations and I'm going to change it. And instead of moving on the X axis, I'm going to move on the Y axis. So I'm going to delete this and create a unit Y. If I'm going to simply plug while keeping shift pressed this one there, I'm now applying to this part two separate transformation and creating two different parts, just for you to see if I can hide this. And now I have two parts, which I can separately control. And I can assign different locations and different orientations. Well, I'm going to then, if I'm going to now visualize my aggregation again and reset, you can now see that I have two starting points. Now, of course, that's very much up to you and it's something that you have to take care. 
I have to always uh, make sure that the orientations are staying compatible. Like in this case, I didn't care about that. And these two aggregations, they are the same aggregation. So I have one single aggregation object, but it's geometrically impossible for them to actually connect because the orientations that they're following are not the same. So I'm gonna do a further video, a little bit further, a little bit in some time about how to do that, how to create transformations which have like discrete steps. But for now, just know that this is how you can uh, position different parts in space uh, and decide it's their location. So you can always modify that and restart and you get that. Great. I hope this was uh, helpful for you and I hope this is going to solve some of the problems you have been encountering in the past using WASP. And uh, if you like the video and want to keep updated, press the little logo up down there and uh, subscribe to the channel. And for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.